Hola, hola. Welcome to the Breakthrough Brand Show. I'm Fabi Paolini, and my mission on this podcast is to give you the behind-the-scenes stories, anecdotes, and unique perspectives behind building a premium brand that makes a real impact. I believe that when you create a message that is aligned with your truth, you can have the breakthroughs that changes lives. Each week, me and my guests share with you how we're making an impact with our message and the stories behind our success. So that being said, let's dive into today's episode. Well, I'm so excited today to welcome Danny Brassel to the show. He is a highly sought after speaker, trainer, writer, coach, Known as the Jim Carrey with a PhD, I want to hear more about that. He helps entrepreneurs and business leaders boost their business and impact by improving their communication skills. You've made it to the right place. Thank you so much for being here, Danny. Can you Thank you me? so much, Bobby. Thanks for spreading <laughs> joy. Yes, I am like your biggest fan. I love what you're doing. You lead with desire. Most people lead with pain and it drives me nuts. So thank you. Keep on doing it. I love that. Thank you. Well, tell me what it is that you do in your own words. So my mission is to bring joy back into education and the workplace. And I do that in four ways. First of all, I speak all over the world to uh, schools, associations, organizations, and businesses, pumping them up. Second of all, I have the world's largest uh, reading engagement program online, which teaches parents in just over two months how to get their kids to read more, read better, and most importantly, to love reading. Third, I uh, work with a company called Cyber Smarties, which is a social media platform for kids ages 5 to 12, which teaches kids positive social media habits. So, for example, if I were to type a message to you, uh, Fabi, I think you're ugly. It won't let me send the message. Instead, they get a pop up that says that's not a nice thing to say to Fabi. Here are some suggested ways you should talk to her. And it frustrates the kids that it slows them down so much that within three days, the kids only send positive messages. And so um, the program has single-handedly eliminated cyberbullying in Ireland. Now we're in India, the UAE, wow. uh, Turkey, New Zealand, and I'm now in charge of the United States. And then fourth, and this is probably most important for you and your audience, is I work with entrepreneurs, business owners, executives on how to create powerful presentations that get their audience to take the next step, whether that's to purchase a product or to donate to a clause, uh, uh, to, to a cause, or uh, simply to invest in your idea. Okay, okay. This is <laughs> a this long is answer it. to a short question. Okay. Yes, but I wanna I wanna start before we jump into creating the presentation, which is where I'm obviously gonna wanna go into. I want to kind of hear about how you build a brand with so many different branches and so different like so many different areas. How does that work for you as the personal brand behind that? I'm kind of curious. <laughs> I kind of follow your lead, Fabi. When you serve people and treat them right, uh, it's amazing the opportunities that you're presented. And so, for example, Cyber Smarties, during the pandemic, I met with the founder, Dermot Hudner, who was in Ireland, and he basically said, oh, you and I do the same thing. We teach people positive habits. And so through positive communication and a, a service-minded approach rather than selling. I mean, that's what I've always been impressed. You're teaching things the right way, Fabi. I see a lot of sharks out there mm -hmm. that are, are going for the pain points and they scare people and they just sell, sell, sell. And that's not you at all. What you're doing is you're serving, serving, serving. And if people do business with you, that's great, but you're making the world a better place. And I commend you for that. Thank you. And this was about you, though, but thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like that what I've learned over time is how important it is for you to really bring your audience up, right? I feel like I was taught so much. People do, don't buy, what, what's the phrase, like to get away from a, or, or get, go towards something, they buy only to get away from a problem. And while that's true, What's not true is that you need to make them feel like the world is falling apart as the only way to buy. Like, I feel like that's so manipulative and unnecessary. And that premium buyer doesn't need that. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> well, that's great. After I hear you, I don't feel like I have to take a shower. Plus, <laughs> you're exactly, exactly the kind of person I want to surround myself with, Fabi. I have like a secret agenda uh, when I'm working with speakers. And I work with all kinds of different people. But my secret agenda agenda is I'm trying to work with a lot more women and minorities so that they have stages because 
they have buying power in this world and they're completely yeah. underrepresented on stages. And, you know, that sounds probably odd coming from a, a, a white guy, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, no, I think yeah. that we are, are much more powerful when we embrace the diversity around us. I love that. Okay. So let's talk about speaking. Cause I am, I, I have a little story to share with you. Um, kind of random, but I have not been somebody who has done in-person speaking events, right? In the past, not really. But last year I had this kind of crazy thing that happened to me in the like span of a week and a half. I get approached by this guy who books a call to speak to my team to quote unquote, hire us to help them with his branding, messaging and all the things in the company. But really he had an agenda and he wanted to really talk to me. So, you know, I have a process where you don't really talk to me if you want to buy from me, but he was so adamant and like, oh, I want to know if Fabi can speak at my event that I actually hopped on a call with him. And this was on a Thursday and he was like, Fabi, yes, I want to hire you, but really what I want is for you to come speak at my event. And he had an event the following Friday. So like a week later. So I said, yes. And um, because it was Miami, because and it was like, okay, no brainer, Spanish speaking event. All right, cool. I'll put the presentation together. I already have my webinar, my presentation done. It's pretty simple. So um, right when we're getting to show up, there's going to be a point to all of this, I promise. <laughs> we go to the event and um, or a couple of days before the event, he calls me up and he says, Fabi, I actually want to sell something with you on stage. Like, I want you to be part of the thing that I'm selling. Do you want to do you want to do it? I'm like, okay. So long story short. A week after this person approaches me, I go to the event. It's completely sold out. It's like 200 people in the room. We sell his, he sells his thing, includes me in it. And I made 50 K in one hour. Wow. And what the, like, I was like, what is this speaking? So tell me about speaking and how powerful it can be <laughs> for uh, entrepreneurs. <laughs> I love that story, Fabi. I was working with a guy about two months ago, Gustavo from Ecuador. He's like the great American success story. I love him because he comes here and doesn't speak a word of English. Now he's highly successful in real estate. And so his pitch was an expensive pitch. He had a pitch for a $40,000 real estate coaching program. Now that is a high ticket item. Yeah. Uh, but we worked on his presentation that Tuesday afternoon. And one of the things I, and I'm encouraging everybody in your audience is that there's two ways you, be get, you, you become a better speaker. First of all, watch lots of different speakers. I mean, I watch everybody. I watch politicians, comedians, televangelists. I watch them in front of big audiences, small audiences, female, male, international, national. Here's a, here's a strategy for everybody watching. Uh, I watch a lot of award shows. Why? Because when the person wins the Academy Award, they only have 45 seconds mm -hmm. to create a presentation. And I want to see if they can actually connect with their audience. And most people, they blow it. They're like, huh, I want to thank my agent and God. And, you know, and it's silly. Yeah, right. uh, but there was a guy a couple of years ago, a British gentleman, who did an ex outstanding job. So um, I can't remember his name. I'm going to call him Bob Hall. I can't remember. I think mm -hmm. it was Walker. We'll call him Bob Walker. It's not his name. I, Joe Walker. I think Joe Walker. Okay. okay. Doesn't even matter. <laughs> so Joe Walker, he wins for best film editing. So you have all the most important people in Hollywood in the audience and nobody cares about film editing. He's not a celebrity. And so he gets up there and he says, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but when phrased properly, the term Academy Award nominee can be used as an insult. Well, now you see everybody's kind of leaning in listening. Right. And he, for example, yesterday I got in an argument with my 17-year-old daughter and she said, well, Academy Award nominee Joe Walker. And all of a sudden you see everybody laughing hysterically. I watched him get off the stage, Bobby. Sandra Bullock wants to meet him. Will Smith wants to meet him. Uh, Brad Pitt. That's the power of connecting with a presentation. So we'll get back to Gustavo. The other way to become a better speaker is you got to do the reps. I always tell people, you know, speak to service organizations. Even the smallest towns have a Rotary Club, a Lions Club, an mm -hmm. Optimist Club. Speak to churches, synagogues, speak to schools. Uh, I love podcasts because it's uh, low stakes, but great practice. And you never know when you actually might sell something. And so I, I was stressing this to Gustavo and he was going on a podcast that night. And he said, should I make the pitch? I'm like, make your pitch. $40,000 for your real estate program. Make the pitch. Long story shorter. Bobby, the next day he calls me elated. He's like, Danny, you are a genius. I'm like, oh, did you sell any? And he said, 23. 
What? I'm like, no way. <laughs> Bobby, I'm not a math guy. I'm a reading guy. My <laughs> That's a lot of friend, money. He made $920,000 on a pitch that we developed that afternoon. That's the power of a powerful pitch. But again, this is why I wanted to work with you, Fabi, because you're ethical. There's a lot of snakes yeah. out there. And I mean, I got to take a shower after I listen to them. You know, I think it's very important when we present to our audiences that whether they do business with us or not, we're serving the audience in some way. And so give them your best stuff. I learned that from Monty Python. Monty <laughs> Python, uh, <laughs> They yeah. didn't know what to do with their DVDs because they weren't selling DVDs. And so what they do, they put all the information available for free on YouTube. Right. And guess what? That year, highest selling DVDs were Monty Python. It's counterintuitive, but if you really want people to work with you, you need to show them your best stuff. And that's what I love about you. I, I feel like I, if you're not giving me your best stuff, I want to see what your best stuff is because you got great stuff. Well, I, so there is a lot that you said that I want to go into again. So, but kind of going in straight into that, what I've learned too, is that you want to give people your best stuff because people often think that if they give away their best stuff, people won't want to hire them. And it's actually the total opposite. The person that's going to hire you is going to hire you, whether you've given all of your content away for free or not. The person that's not going to hire you, you can give them everything. You can give them nothing. They're not going to hire you. It's about a mindset. And I feel like the people that are going to hire you, they're going to hire you because they understand that it's not really the videos, the trainings, the worksheets, the knowledge. It's about having your presence, having your attention, having your eyes looking at their situation, their con whatever you specifically do. And that it doesn't matter if you're giving away your content for free. So that's what I have to say about that. Hey, amen. I'm a Baptist in your front row. I mean, <laughs> why, why would you go to a Bruce Springsteen concert and pay five hundred dollars exactly when you can buy the CD for ten dollars? You already nailed the. Ah, oh, that's good. That's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. Numbers. So okay, one thing. So there's a couple of things that you said that I caught on that I really like, and I noticed that in your pitch in this conversation, you're using a lot of storytelling. Do you feel like that is a core part of building an effective, you know, message or, 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 or whatever presentation basically? Yeah. What, what drew me to you, Fabi, is your emphasis on storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so here's a strategy for everybody uh, watching right now is tonight. I want you to get in a nice, comfortable chair with a libation of choice, get out a pen and paper. And I want you to write down every story that's ever happened in your life. And I don't mean the whole story. I just mean triggers. So for example, the time I locked myself out of the car out in front of Costco, the time dad spilt mustard on his tie in that fancy restaurant, you'll find that mm -hmm. within an hour, you'll come up with about four to 500 stories. So that's the first part of the exercise. The second part is then I want you to figure out, well, what does this story relate to? You look at, oh, this is actually really a story about responsibility. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a story of overcoming adversity. You know, so here's one. I, I was just working with a, a, a woman and um, uh, she was like, well, how does this work? And I say, well, I, I've always thought that like the younger stories are even better. So I taught in the inner city uh, for many years. And so one of my presentations, here's, here's the opening. I say, you know, every other teacher at my elementary school where I worked at went through hundreds, if not thousands of band-aids every single school year. I mean, kids, they want band-aids. They work better than smokes on a prison yard. Yeah, well, I get that. Every single year, <laughs> I only went through one band-aid. And all of my colleagues asked, how can that be, Danny? Well, on the first day of school, I always have a chubby kid. We'll call him Paco. He's picking at a scab all morning. And finally, right after lunch, he finally has success and starts bleeding. And the annoying little girl next to him raises her hand, rubs her nose and says, Mr. Brissell, Paco is bleeding. And I go over, I'm like, oh my gosh, Paco, you know what you need? You need a Band-Aid. Now all of the little heads in my room look and I say, I got a drawer full of Band-Aids in my desk and I don't have any ordinary Band-Aids. I got Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Band-Aids, and I'm going to give you the Green Ranger because he's the coolest, isn't he? Now Paco's smiling. All the kids are smiling. I take Paco to my desk, and I say, oh, before I put on the Band-Aid, we got to clean out the wound. 
So I take out the clear <laughs> liquid bottle and show all the kids with the rubbing alcohol. And I say, Paco, hold my hand. This might sting. I pour the rubbing alcohol and he's like, ah! <laughs> there you go. Hey, anybody else need a Band-Aid? Nope. Bobby, my <laughs> students can have a skull fracture and they will never ask me <laughs> for a Band-Aid. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Today, I'm not gonna give you Band-Aids. I'm gonna give you practical strategies that you can use to build the power, the perfect, powerful presentation. So you see what I did is I took a so story good, so good. to create the point. So good. And you I know, like to use humor because, you know, life's no, too short. That's why you're the Jim Carrey, right? That's why you're the Jim Carrey with a PhD, right? Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny because what I've learned over the years is the more that I include storytelling into my process into my marketing, mm -hmm. the more powerful it becomes. At the end of the day, one of the things that I've really realized is that what you're teaching might be the same as other people's, but how or other people's, I don't know if I said that correctly. Uh, yes. Did I say, I, I always question my Spanish. No, language. no, no. I get it. Does that make sense? Anyways. Of you another go to my Spanish. Puedo hablar como un niño de siete o ocho años. That was pretty good. That was good. Um, but anyways, how you teach it is only yours. And that's where storytelling comes into and thinking about what are some of the little anecdotes? What are some of the little things or big things that have happened to you? And how can you relate it back to your point that you're trying to get across? And the more that you can incorporate stories, the more you need, like people are not going to remember, you know, the first thing that I did online when I launched my business in the U.S. in 2016 was this video series called The Brand Experience. It took me hours to create these like five minute videos, literally hours. And I remember so vividly trying to record this perfect presentation. And it was like five, five minute videos, but it took me, I don't even remember how long. <laughs> and um. It, work, it didn't work at all. It was completely bombed. I ran ads to it. I got zero clients from it. Nothing worked. And I thought I was, of course, going to become a millionaire with it because that's how our brains work in that stage of business when you're launching. At this stage where I'm more advanced, it's like, you know that that's not how things work. But anyways, um, and there was zero storytelling in it. It was all yeah. academic, all this is what branding is. This is why you need a brand. This is why this is who your audience is, the demographic, psychographic. It was all stuff that could be Googled or found in any academic book on branding and marketing. And obviously now I look at it, I'm like, duh. I mean, it's zero memorable. Now the content that I create is how do I turn this into a story? Like, how do I use an example to make this point come across? <laughs> Does that make sense? You, you you just gave your audience so many gems there. I mean, the first thing you said, which I loved, is what you teach is not unique. How you teach exactly. is what is unique. The other thing that you said, you, you basically reinforced my point is, you know, one of my mentors was Jim Rohn, and he said, you can't pay other people to do your push-ups. If you want to get better at speaking, you got to do the work. Your hmm. first videos, stump, stump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you have to go through that stage because... The second video stinks just a little bit less. And the third one's a little bit less. You get better every, and now, and the other thing that I, I think you've learned is one of the best strategies is don't share your successes with your audience, share your failures. Yeah. Cause not everybody in your audience has succeeded, but they've all failed and they're going to feel much more connected to you. If you're willing to expose, I mean, Brene Brown, she's a wonderful speaker. She talks about uh, exposing your vulnerability. So I commend you on that, but you did something that most people don't do, Fabi. You actually did something. Exactly. Talk, 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 talk. But, you know, uh, Larry Winget, he's a wonderful speaker. And uh, his first book is just this horrible cover. And somebody was making fun of his book. And he said, well, my ugly book is better than the one you ain't got. <laughs> That's a good one. Right. That's a good one. Okay, so the other question that I have for you is, and this is going to be completely a selfish question because I am okay. actually very curious to ask, is how do you, or what's required, let me try to phrase this in the best way. What makes a great pitch is my question or what I'm trying to get at. How do you make your pitch something that becomes like a no-brainer, I'm in. What needs to happen from the perspective of the speaker for that? 
Well, there's a great uh, book I read called Mindless Eating by Brian Wansnick, and he had a line that totally changed my life. He said, the best diet is the one you don't know you're on. Mm. And I would say the same thing with a pitch. The mistake I see with most speakers is they, they do their song and dance, and then they do a pitch at the end. And the brain knows they're being pitched, and that's the wrong way of doing it. Here's what you're very good at, and I don't even know if you realize that you're doing it all the time, Fabi, is you're whispering sweet nothings in people's ears, is what I call them, is throughout your presentation, you're letting people know that you offer all these different services. And so what's happening is while people are listening to you, they're thinking to themselves, huh, Fabi, she teaches branding. I wonder if she teaches people like me. I wonder how much it costs. And they have this conversation going on in their head. So the perfect pitch is what you eventually come to. When you make that pitch, people are like, oh, I was hoping Fabi would make a pitch. That's how you do it, is you're, you're, you're setting up those little sweet nothings throughout the presentation. And we, you know, uh, you, you do it naturally. I don't even know if you realize that you're doing it, but I think it's, it's really important what you're doing. And, and again, the thing that I love that you do, which most people don't, is you're serving the audience. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I do a lot of leadership speeches and one of my biggest, there's a couple of things that annoy me is when people talk about servant leadership. I'm like, well, that's just being redundant. <laughs> Leaders by definition are servants. You know, That's you're true. serving constantly. If you're not serving, you're not an effective leader. I hate that one. The one that really drives me nuts is when people say, enjoy the journey. I always say, you ever notice the people that say, enjoy the journey have already succeeded? When they were failing, were they like, man, man, this is great that I have been fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm really enjoying this journey. It's a lot of fun. No, you don't enjoy the journey. It stinks. I mean, when you made those videos in 2016, you're like, man. You're, re you're retaking every, you're doing like 17 takes and still wasn't horrible. good. Now you get out of bed. It's almost like, um, you know, when you first start driving, you know, you're, you got you're like your 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, yeah. you're adjusting mirrors, you know, you know, and after a couple of years, you got one hand on the wheel, you're putting on your lipstick, you're eating an egg McMuffin. I mean, that's what you've done because you've done the reps again. And so the perfect pitch, I think, before you ever got to that pitch, people want to do business with you. And you're, you're doing all kinds of things. First of all, you're serving. Second of all, you're personable. You're sharing your vulnerabilities. And you're letting people know throughout the presentation while you are teaching that you offer services so that by the time you get to that pitch, it's not like all of a sudden you feel cornered at a timeshare uh, presentation. <laughs> exactly. I love that. I agree. No, I, I actually do it very intentional. And obviously in a way where you are just intertwining it very naturally with the content that you're creating. So for example, I'm actually doing a big launch next week, a big event, a five-day event where I'm going to be talking about how to elevate your brand message, attract premium clients, and I will be pitching throughout the whole thing. But part of my strategy behind that is to very naturally throughout everything, talk about the program. You know, I'm teaching this. This is part of what we teach within our program. And it's like a very subtle way of, you know, I'm going to tell, I'm going to sell you this program afterwards. Um, but it's kind of very naturally. And mm -hmm. I feel like I would add to that, to kind of what you said is really, um, just building those connections with your audience and being very honest and vulnerable. I think you mentioned being vulnerable. And I think that that's truly important in a, an effective pitching process. I mean, that's kind of what I've experienced. Too. Well, and absolutely. What you're doing, Fabi, also is you're inviting people to your family. You only want to work with the people that you want to work with. So exactly. one of my favorite speakers is Jack Canfield, and he has a phrase that I love. He says, SW, 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 SW. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Ah, oh, that's so good. Everybody. So good. Such a good phrase. Good one. Good one. So, okay. What is the measure of success in a presentation? What do you feel? Yeah, like so the measure of success is not that you get a standing ovation and the measure of success is not that people come up to you after the presentation and say, wow, you're a really good speaker. The only measure of success is that people take the next step with you. Now, maybe you you just want them to sign up for your newsletter. So mm -hmm. that's a measure of success is how many people signed up for your newsletter. Um, I, <laughs> 
I, I'm a big believer. I always say, well, how do you invade a, a, a small country by land, by air, by sea? So when you're you're making your pitch, you know, uh, how do you m have your pitch? Well, it should be up on your screen. You should have the QR code. You should have the website. You should. Uh, but I'm a big believer in contact cards, a physical card on every single seat. Uh, and one of my mentors, he always brags that he gets 100% of his contact cards back. Uh, and I say, well, you're underperforming. And he laughs. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I get 125% of my cards back because my card asks for everybody's name and email to send them the free gift. But then on the back, it says, oh, is there somebody you know that could also benefit from this information? So I get their name and email at the same time. Uh, and that's for a free offer, a, you know, a paid offer like Gustavo, my prize student. Sometimes you make $920,000 just pitching a 30 minute podcast. It was unbelievable. But what was smart about Gustavo is he knew his audience. You know, uh, if you're an insurance salesman speaking at an elementary school student, at an elementary school, that's probably not the right audience for you to pitch your 401ks. Exactly. But if you're speaking to retirees, you know, audience matters. Is you absolutely, I mean, those, any presenter has two things that they need to know going in. First of all, you need to know who your audience is. And second of all, you need to know what is the problem that you solve for your audience. If you know those two uh, answers, you're in pretty good shape. And if you don't know those two answers, I, I would say that there's no chance of success at all. And Absolutely. so next week for your five day event, you, you know your audience, you know the problem you're solving, you're clear, you're set, exactly. which is great. That's it. So how do you how do you work with your clients? Is it specifically to help them create their on stage speak like how do we say this like speech? I don't know, keynote presentation? Is it to create a webinar? Is it to create all of them? I want to hear a little bit more about that too. Yeah, it just depends on what their needs are. So I, I I used to do well, and I still kind of do if they offer me the right amount of money, I'd, I'd fly out to companies and they'd have me come for two days and work with a team of about eight to 10 people. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd craft presentations, whatever they were trying to do, whether it was a webinar or maybe they're doing uh, uh, business to business sales or something. Uh, now, what I do is usually once or twice a month, I'll just have a, a, a virtual one day seminar of about eight to 10 people. I think eight to 10 is perfect because I can give everybody the individualized attention they need, but then it, I think it's important that people see that other people are struggling and have a lot of similar questions. And we'll work on uh, whatever it is that they wanna work on. Here's a strategy for everybody to understand though, is uh, everything I do is research-based. I mean, I, I don't do it based on opinion. I can show you the, the data on what works. Uh, one of the most important things for you to remember next week, Fabi, for your presentation is the primacy and recency effect. What does that mean? Holy cow, the bun is more important than the burger. People remember the beginning of the talk and the end of the talk. They don't remember all the information you're teaching them in between. I see so many people stressing about what they're teaching them. Like, that's not the important part. The important part is how do you connect with people? And you're masterful at this. What are you doing to connect with your audience? Uh, the other thing a lot of people will hire me to do, I used to, before I was a... Uh, a teacher, uh, one of my jobs, I used to be a stand-up comedian and I love uh, getting people to laugh. I, I think it's important too, to get people to laugh just because I was judging a speaking competition recently, 1300 presentations and wow. not a single funny one. They were all, all <laughs> sad. I, was, I wanted to jump off a cliff afterwards. And I mean, don't get me wrong. This is what, I, what drew me to you, Fabi. You're doing it the right way. Don't get me wrong. I know pain is an effective measure. I know it's effective. But I don't like that. And here's why. So when I'm working with people, usually what we create is what I call a stump speech. I, I, I used to be a reporter and I had to cover politicians and they had the same speech every day. I called a stump speech. I've heard people call it um, the perfect pitch. I've heard people call it the signature talk, you know, call it peanut butter and jelly. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's, it's what makes you unique. And uh, uh, here's the reason I don't train people that way. First of all, the world just went through a global pandemic. There's a lot of pain in the world. I don't need to hear your painful story. A lot of people are hurting out there. Exactly. Second of all, do you really want to deliver that painful talk a thousand <laughs> times? I mean, I have a friend, his daughter was murdered. He's given that speech a thousand times. 
you have to be a much stronger person than I am to talk about the worst day of your life a thousand times. And here's the one that people are going to get angry about with me. My mission is always to get people to smile, to laugh. I can tell the same jokes over and over again. And there's something noble about trying to get people to smile. I think when you're trying to get people to cry, your own tears are crocodile tears after the 20th time. I think it's very inauthentic. I think you've just become programmed to say it and there's nothing authentic about that talk whatsoever. That's what people get angry about when I say that. And so I'm always trying to get people to laugh and I'll work with, um, <laughs> I work with a lot of engineers. Uh, engineers aren't known for their sense of humor. They're very dry right. people. And so I was working with this, um, this Indian gentleman a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember exactly what his name was. It was, uh, it was like uh, uh, Majid Padmanabhan, I think it was, what, it was what it was. And he was very serious. He was like, my Majid Padmanabhan. And he, he was doing his presentation. I said, oh, and he's like, Danny, can you help me be funny? I'm like, yes, I can help you right in your first line. So I said, well, here's how I want you to start. I want you to say, hello, my name is Majid Padmanabhan. <laughs> Gee, I sure hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> make fun of yourself. I, I love people that make fun of themselves. I mean, um, uh, I, a lot of people will teach you to try and brag to your audience at the beginning of your presentation. I never do that. I have my introduction. I write an introduction that makes me sound like Jesus Christ, but somebody <laughs> else is saying it. You know, you gave me a great introduction today. And then I come in, I'm like, yeah, Jesus Christ forgot to wear his dress socks today. Now everybody's like, oh, he's just like me. He has a sense of humor. That's how you connect with an audience. You don't brag. You, you talk about... Uh, you know, talk about emigrating from Venezuela and raising three daughters and, uh, you know, uh, becoming a, a, a successful businesswoman in Florida. I mean, that's that's bragging. You, you talk about like the day to day struggles, which is great. I mean, I was working with a financial planner a couple of months ago. And he had nothing funny to say. He's like, make me funny, Danny. I'm like, well, what do you sell? And he said uh, 401ks. And I'm like, well, that's, there you go. You say 401k, I can't even walk a 5k. Again, it's not laugh out loud funny. All you're right. trying to do is to connect with your audience to get yeah. them to smile. You know, there's a lot of, I, I think it's very admirable to get people to smile. Like the way, one of the things I'm always trying to do is like, I'll use humor, but I'll also use inspiration. So a story I, I just started uh, telling people is about my, my second grade teacher, Miss Hess at Blanche Stoddard Elementary School in Iowa Falls, Iowa was an amazing teacher. One day us second graders were at our seats um, uh, doing some kind of seat work and she interrupted us and said, kids, raise your hands if you can see this pencil and all of us raised our hands and she said, good, now follow me. We all followed her into the hallway and she said, raise your hand if you can see the exit sign at the end of the hallway. And all of us raised our hands and she said, good, follow me. She took us to the playground. She said, raise your hand if you can see that house across the street. And all of us raised our hands and she said, good, now, this is a tough one. Raise your hand if you can see the water tower five blocks away. <laughs> All of us raised our hands and she said, good. Now, this is an important question. How far can you see? And one little girl said, I can see a mile. And I said, I can see two miles. And one little boy's like, I can see five miles. And she said, is that as far as you can see? And all of us nodded our heads and she said, good. Now look up. We all looked up and she said, raise your hand if you can see the sun. Mm -hmm. And all of us raised our hands and she said, good. Did you know the sun is 92.9 million miles away? Mm -hmm. And the farthest any of you thought you could see is only five miles. You all are grossly underestimating what you are capable of. That's how you get people drawn in, is exactly what you were talking about. Get them to focus on the story, get them to believe in themselves, get them to see the possibilities. And that's what 
I wish I was there next week because those next five days. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, so Danny, that's amazing. That is so good. Well, thank you so much, Danny. This has been so, so good having you here. Can you tell us where people can find you, where they can hear you, all the different things? Well, as a, as a uh, thank you for, for listening to me for this half hour, I want to give everybody a couple of freebies. So if you go to freegiftfromdanny.com, again, freegiftfromdanny.com, I'm going to give everybody, uh, first off, a complimentary e-copy of my book, Read, Lead, and Succeed. It's a book I wrote for a school principal who was trying to keep his faculty and staff positively engaged. So I said, okay, I'll write you a book. So every week I give you a concept, an inspirational quote, an inspirational story, a book recommendation on a book you should read, but you're probably too lazy because you're an adult. So I also <laughs> have a picture book recommendation demonstrates the same concept in five minutes. And then I'm also going to give everybody access to a five day reading challenge I did last summer for about 700 parents around the world, where every day for five days uh, for an hour, I'll give you all kinds of ideas on how to get your kids to read more, read better, and most importantly, love reading. I mean, I think schools do an adequate job of teaching kids how to read, but the question I always ask people is, what good is it teaching a kid how to read if they never want to read? That's I teach people why to read, because I've never had to tell a kid, go watch TV. I've never had to tell a kid, go play a video game. And I never want to have to tell a kid, go read. I want them to choose to do it for themselves. So if you go to freegiftfromdanny.com, you get all those. And I just really want to thank you for all that you're doing, Fabi. I'm a fan and mm -hmm. I'm rooting for you next week. And uh, make sure you videotape it. I can give you feedback if you'd like. Oh, I will. I will. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. Thank you, Danny. Mm -hmm. Thank you. God bless. Gracias for listening to today's episode of the Breakthrough Brand Show. To listen to more episodes or to be featured as a guest, go to fabipaulini.com slash podcast for more details. Can I ask you for something? If you got value out of this episode, would you share it on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or just post it online. If you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let me know about the show and include the hashtag Breakthrough Brand Show. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We're regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure that you don't miss any episode, go ahead and subscribe right now. Your thumbs up, rating, amor, love, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean so much to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, fabipaulini.com, or follow me everywhere as Fabi Paulini. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Con amor, Fabi.